We currently use the audit not exists command to track errors in our database. I don't think there's an equivalent policy under unified audit. And how do we accomplish this in 23C slash AI? Because in 23, unified audit is the only game in town. When you upgrade from any previous version of Oracle to 23C, the set of old style or traditional auditing commands you have will be migrated over, but they can't be touched. They'll still continue to work. Therefore, an upgrade is not going to break your auditing because obviously auditing is pretty important, but they are fixed. They can't be edited. They can't be manipulated. All they can be is dropped. And your job now is if you want to extend your auditing, you now need to use unified auditing. If you want to migrate those, we have some scripts that will help you. We'll talk about that in a second. But you cannot change those old style auditing commands once you are in 23AI. You just, all you can do is drop them if you're planning on migrating them to unified audit, but otherwise they're just going to continue running. The concept of being able to manipulate old style audit commands in 23AI has been removed because audit style auditing is de-supported in 23AI. Important thing to know. Let's look at the workaround as to how you handle this particular issue of audit not exists, because audit not exists is a traditional auditing command, and there is not an equivalent in 23AI. So let's have a look at what dramas that might cause. So just to get an idea for what this particular command is, because not a lot of people use audit not exists, let's go through some old style auditing here. You can see I've connected to my version 21 database, PDB21A, and we'll do some typical traditional auditing. I've said audit select table by Scott. So anything, any uh, select statement that Scott runs, I want to audit. Audit select on this particular table, audit select on this particular sequence, and audit an alter table if someone's successfully done it. And this is the one that I was, is a bone of contention. Audit not exists by access. Every time someone does a query or some sort of operation which returns a not exist error, whether it's table view does not exist, user does not exist, et cetera, anytime they get a not exist style of error, we capture it in the audit log, which come, you know, which comes back to our point about maybe looking for people trying to do SQL injection, people digging around in your data dictionary. Now, when you come to migrate to Oracle 23 AI, as I said, if you upgraded this particular database, those five audit commands would be migrated over, but you can't touch them. And obviously our recommendation is rather than just leave them in place, we recommend that you convert them to the equivalent in audit policies, which is unified auditing. And the nice thing is if you head to the MozNote 2909718, we actually give you a script. It'll go read your existing audit settings and convert them to the equivalent unified audit commands so you can do a nice, easy migration. You don't have to leave them in that fixed unified, uh, traditional auditing. So in this case, this is what that script would generate, give or take. It gives them random names that you have to fix up, but this is mostly what we're doing. We're saying create an audit policy now. This is unified auditing for basically select actions on Scott. Do HR select actions on HR employees and HR employees sequence and any kind of alter table commands we want to create an audit policy for. And this is how we would turn it on. With those audit policies, we then effectively would then apply them to the database. So if I want to pick up any kind of audit, audit, alter table command, the equivalent of going database wide in traditional auditing is everyone except these people in unified auditing. To do HR select, whenever, does, whenever the HR schema does a select on HR employees, we do that. Whenever the Scott schema does a select on the Scott schema, anything in the Scott schema, we audit policy that. Once I've put in my new audit policies in Unified Audit, this is how I would get rid of my traditional audit settings. And I've made the jump now to Unified Auditing with the same kind of processing. So this is all cool. But of course, if we look at this, this is what's actually happened. I've implemented, these are my original five traditional audit commands, and I've replaced them with these. Now, create audit policy on Scott select, action select, maps to one. One is taken care of. This audit policy looks after two and three. And this audit policy looks after number four. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that we've actually missed this one. Because there is no command in unified auditing equivalent to audit not exists. That's obviously a problem for anyone relying on this in traditional auditing because it's gone in 23AI. So how do we do this? What does this actually do? When you do audit not exists by access, this is what's happening. Let's connect to my version 21 database and do a query against something that doesn't exist. You can see I get this. 
audit by not exist does this. I'll turn that off and go back in. And this is what my traditional audit trail looks like. I'm looking at DBA audit exists. This is the sub element of the DBA audit trail for traditional auditing. And it shows me this is the kind of stuff I capture. This is my name of my machine. This is the owner. This is the object I tried to query. And I got an object 942, etc. DBA audit exists is the subset of the entire audit trail in traditional auditing that captures all the not exists errors. So if we look at the DDL for DBA audit exists, it actually is, as I said, literally just a subset of DBA audit trail. You can see the definition of the view is just go to my global audit trail. And whenever there was an audit entry for the following return codes are effectively deemed as audit not exist events. So we're just doing normal traditional auditing. And whenever we see one of these things, we actually capture it out of the audit trail. That's what DBA audit exists does. With this information in mind, you can actually come up with a workaround in 23AI. If the definition of audit not exists is whenever someone gets one of these error codes, we need to log it, well, you could do it with a trigger. I could do something like this. This is how I can mimic audit not exists in 23AI. Whenever there's an error on the database, if it's 942, that should have been 943, 959, 418, et cetera, all those error codes you saw in the previous DDL, then basically stick something in my existing audit trail. I can't insert into the standard audit trail, obviously, but I could actually have a record here of my, my own version of DBA audit exists, which does all the requisite details. So this is a workaround for 23AI in order to capture not exist messages. Now, there is a cheeky data pump hack. When I first saw that when we upgrade from any version of Oracle to 23, we preserve the traditional auditing, I reached out to the data pump team and I said, well, that's fine for upgrade, but what if someone's using data pump to upgrade? What if someone is simply doing a full export of their whole database in say 19 and simply importing it into 23? Data pump is running DDLs. Surely it's going to get errors saying, no, you can't run traditional auditing DDLs. They're blocked, de-supported in 23AI. Anyway, data pump has a special setting. It effectively says, okay, if it's a data pump import, then I'm allowed to apply these traditional auditing settings on. If you try run audit select table by Scott, a traditional auditing command in 23AI, you get an error. You're not allowed to run traditional auditing commands in 23AI. What you could do is run that command in Oracle 19 in a little schema called Scott, and then data pump that setting into 23. You won't be able to change it once it's there, but you could actually have a new traditional audit setting in 19, data pump it in, and there it is in 23. I wouldn't recommend that as a valid plan of attack because obviously that's going to be a very long-winded, complicated, and hard to document solution. But if you're really stuck in a bind and you want an old style audit command and you don't want to go create a unified audit policy, then you could do something like this. The reason I think it's silly is if you've read anything about unified audit, it's got more power, it's got more flexibility, and it's a lot more efficient on your system. Audit records are cached before being dumped out to the dictionary tables, as opposed to unified or traditional auditing, which just simply says, yep, oh, you want to create a record, do an insert. So if you want to reduce the overhead of auditing, then unified auditing is the way to go. So this is for a bit of fun, but if you're in a really in a stuck in a pickle, you could actually do it. Please be aware, this was just an oversight on our part. We were unaware of the importance of audit not exist. We generally thought it wasn't a feature that was being used that much by people. And then when we discovered that, yes, people were actually were, you know, upset when it disappeared from 23AI or when it disappeared from unified auditing, which has actually been around since version 12, we said, yep, yeah, okay, we better put this back on the roadmap. So uh, in a future RU of 23, uh, a, an audit policy equivalent to audit not exist in traditional auditing will come along.